Gilliam's cavort with Hollywood having finished, the $40 million budget for The Man Who Killed Don Quixote had to be raised without any studio backing whatsoever, which proved to be enormously difficult. European backers committed, then pulled out. The budget was reduced from 40 to 32 million, and the film's situation was precarious from the start. The Man Who Killed Don Quixote was to have been, perhaps, the most ambitious, most expensive European production ever attempted at that time. Leading up to it, Gilliam battled insecurities, fearing his previous work had already mined enough of Quixote's influence. His films did share an affinity with Cervantes' creation, putting an often tragic focus on romantic dreamers failing to grasp the full reality of their actions. Filming would take place mainly on location in Spain, with cinematography by Gilliam's regular collaborator Nicola Pecorini. The cast included Miranda Richardson, Christopher Eccleston, Rossi De Palma, Jonathan Price, and Sally Phillips, with Johnny Depp starring as Toby and Vanessa Paradis playing his love interest. As Don Quixote, following a two-year search for his perfect lead, Gilliam cast French actor Jean Rochefort. This period of the project's history is well documented, having been captured for posterity by filmmakers Keith Fulton and Louise Pepe, the pair behind an absorbing behind-the-scenes documentary on Twelve Monkeys called The Hamster Factor. Their behind-the-scenes portrait of Quixote wound up becoming a standalone film called Lost in La Mancha, released in 2002. Needless to say, the production it documents did not go well. Since Lost in La Mancha already provides the definitive account of this effort, I'll just summarize the events leading to the film's collapse. The film came together chaotically. Actors had conflicting schedules, the reduced budget, and the sheer size of the production caused widespread confusion. And on the very first day of shooting, in September of 2000, it was discovered that the location was right next to a military base. So fighter jets kept flying overhead all day, ruining sound recording. On the second day, a flash flood washed away a good portion of the equipment and changed the color of the surrounding cliffs, making continuity impossible. Taking a few days off to recover, it was discovered that the flood damage would not be covered by insurance, and several actors had not shown up for filming. By day five, filming had resumed, but Rochefort was in obvious pain while trying to perform on horseback. Production halted again to fly Rochefort to Paris to see his doctor, where he was diagnosed with a double herniated disc in his spine. Gilliam attempted to film whatever additional material he could while Rochefort was away, but it soon became obvious that his Quixote would not be able to return. Even for a film on more stable ground, there probably wasn't any way to recover from a disaster of this magnitude. Insurance adjusters and completion bond guarantors began arriving on force to assess the situation, and by November, the film was cancelled, with only a few precious minutes having been shot. The script passed into the control of insurance companies, and for most people, the film would have been written off as dead. But Terry Gilliam does not give up on his dreams so easily. Two or three years after the collapse of his first attempt, Terry Gilliam was apparently already back in the saddle, attempting to reassemble the rubble of Quixote. It would not allow him to rest for about the next 15 years. According to the director himself, every film he's done between then and now has come in between efforts to resurrect Quixote. For some reason, he couldn't let it go. An insurance claim had been filed on the original collapsed production, which meant the rights to the screenplay belonged to the insurance companies who paid out the investors. This resulted in legal battles over the script which would take years to resolve. Gilliam took a few jobs to fill the time, and by 2006 it began to look as if an end was finally in sight for the script's legal issues. In 2009, probably after wrapping production on the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, Gilliam began to ramp up production for a completely new version of Quixote, 
starting over from scratch. With the script rights now back in his possession, he and Grissoni decided to rewrite the film again, and by 2010, a new cast was ready. In addition to financing, casting has been one of this project's most difficult and convoluted aspects. Gilliam needed recognizable stars to secure his budget, but working with the busy schedules of those stars can also lead to trouble for a large non-Hollywood production. The situation, once again, was precarious. Johnny Depp apparently stayed attached to the film for quite some time, perhaps as late as 2009, but by then he was one of the most in-demand actors in the world, and Ewan McGregor was hired as his replacement in 2010. The recasting of Quixote was trickier. Gerard Depardieu was considered around 2005, then Michael Palin in 2008, before Robert Duvall was cast in 2009. With brand new stars and Tideland producer Jeremy Thomas on board, Gilliam was ready to once again move forward on his dream. But while the film was still in pre-production, financing collapsed and shooting was delayed. By 2012, it didn't look like the production was coming back together, so Gilliam switched over to The Zero Theorem, a script he had been involved with since about 2009 that finally received financing. Once that film was released in 2013, it was back to Quixote. Gilliam was all but desperate to get the film out of his life by now, seemingly driven more by compulsion than anything else. By 2014, for perhaps the seventh time in total, Gilliam assembled financing and hoped to begin shooting later that year. Jack O'Connell was cast as Ewan McGregor's replacement, and John Hurt stepped in to take over as Quixote. It was revealed in interviews around this time that the plot of the film had changed again. Gilliam was continuously evolving the script, and by now, it sounded pretty close to what we would ultimately see on screen. The setting had become contemporary, and the story followed a film director who had shot a version of Don Quixote in a small village many years ago. When he returns to this village, he discovers that his film drove the lead actor insane. The poor man has become convinced that he actually is Quixote. Pre-production chugged along all throughout 2014, and by 2015, Gilliam landed a distributor in the form of Amazon Studios. The film seemed to be in the best spot it had been in years, and filming was scheduled to begin in early 2016. But by September 2015, production was suspended yet again when lead actor John Hurt was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, the most tragic turn of events Gilliam had faced yet. With the film once more in limbo, Gilliam had a fateful meeting with Portuguese producer Paulo Branco in February 2016. Branco allegedly told Gilliam he could raise the 16 million euros needed to begin shooting by September of that year. The two made the deal, and so began a strange, confused production that would lead to even more difficulties, more legal repercussions, and eventually, the film's completion.